Happy Monday, everybody. My name is Brandon Rose, and welcome to episode 249 of the Xbox and 10 podcast. The weekly source of Xbox gaming news covered in around 10 minutes. Every Monday, this podcast covers new game releases, the previous week's gaming news, and we all earn an Xbox-related fun fact together. The show is on YouTube and podcast services around the world, so please do me a favor, subscribe in your favor, and then leave a positive review if you like the show. Xboxin10.com, no numbers, is your quick source for links to all of our podcast destinations and social media profiles, which you can follow at Xboxin10. The big game out last week was Star Wars Dark Forces Remastered, and the games coming out this week include Classified France 44, Expeditions, a Mudrunner game, The Outlast Trials, Mediterranean Inferno, 10 Seconds to Win, Cat and Ghostly Road, Revival, Hex Gambit Respawned, Abris Build to Destroy, Clone Wars The Black Prince, Greed the Mad Scientist, Dungeons of Shalnor, Manic Mechanics, New Star GP, Taxi Life A City Driving Simulator, Sokol Balian, Top Racer Collection, Horror Gallery, Metaball, Opaloid Kingdom, Perfect Ninja Painter 2, Stolen Realm, WWE 2K24, Unicorn Overload, and Zontrom Command. Now with last week's biggest news stories, and we have four to cover this week. Number one, cheaper all-digital Xbox Series X reportedly launching in 2024. Tom West at True Achievements writes, During Microsoft's Activision Blizzard acquisitions, plans for an Xbox Series X and S mid-gen refresh were leaked. And while Xbox boss Phil Spencer has previously suggested that we won't be getting a mid-gen refresh, it seems we still might get a new Series X variant. According to a recent leak, Microsoft is reportedly launching a cheaper all-digital white Xbox Series X this year. Last year, unredacted documents for Series X and S mid-gen refreshes were accidentally revealed by Microsoft. The document showed a cylindrical all-digital Series X in black, codenamed Brooklyn, packing in a 12 teraflop GPU, 16 gigabytes of RAM, improved Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and 2 terabytes of storage. While it now looks like Microsoft won't be going ahead with its mid-gen refresh plans, it seems a new Series X variant could arrive in the summer. According to a report from Exputer, the new all-digital Series X could arrive sometime between June and July if delays are avoided. While it doesn't feature a huge number of upgrades like the mid-gen refresh, the console will reportedly roll out in a white color scheme and, quote, include an improved heatsink and an upgraded Nexus card, end quote, one terabytes of storage and no disk drive due to its all-digital nature. The report suggests it could be $50 to $100 cheaper than the current Xbox Series X console. As with all leaks, we suggest you take this report with a good pinch of salt until Microsoft officially reveals the new console. What we do know for sure, though, is the company plans to talk about the new Xbox console hardware sometime around December, which we are hoping gives us some information about the next Xbox generation. According to Xbox President Sarah Bond, the upcoming console will be, quote, delivering the largest technical leap you'll have ever seen in a hardware generation, end quote, which sounds too far intriguing for us to be left hanging. Fingers crossed we'll learn more about this before the year's end. Well, getting an all digital Series X is good and just have more options for the consumers. It is really disappointing and I think going to be really bad for Microsoft and Xbox if they don't have a more powerful mid gen refresh. All the rumors are pointing to Sony and launching some type of PlayStation 5 Pro this year. And if they have that, Xbox has nothing. And then GTA 6 comes out to only consoles. Why would you purchase GTA 6 if you have both consoles or are looking to get a console for this game which is going to sell hundreds of millions of copies over its lifetime on the less powerful version? It's just, it's not going to be a good look for them. It's going to be really bad and that's all the press is going to be talking about. And rightfully so. GTA 6 is going to be a behemoth and a leviathan of a game in the industry. And if you can get it on the PlayStation 5 Pro versus the original Series X... What decision are you going to make if you have both? Number two, Respawn's Star Wars FPS is canceled, but work on Next Jedi game, Black Panther, and Iron Man will continue. Rebecca Valentine at IGN writes, Today EA announced a major company shakeup that will result in roughly 670 individuals, or 5% of its workforce, losing their jobs. As part of that same reorganization, Respawn's Star Wars FPS and development at Respawn is being canceled. Following CEO Andrew Wilson's announcements of the cuts today, EA Entertainment President Laura Miel shared a note with the staff explaining in more detail what EA's business priorities would be going forward. This includes her announcement that EA is shutting down an early development Star Wars FPS action game, 
as part of an ongoing focus on its own owned brands and supporting its existing games. Quote, it's always hard to walk away from a project and this decision is not a reflection of the team's talent, tenacity, or passion that they have for the game, end quote, Miel wrote. Quote, giving fans the next installment of the iconic franchise that they want is the definition of blockbuster storytelling and the right place to focus, end quote. Not much is known about the Star Wars FPS, but it was rumored to feature a Mandalorian protagonist in some way. EA is undertaking the move in part due to what it perceives to be a rapid shift towards large open world games, massive communities, and live service games. IGN understands that the team previously working on this game will largely be reassigned to other projects, including Apex Legends, Iron Man, Black Panther, and Jedi, for which EA has confirmed the third installment. Their Star Wars Jedi franchise will continue, despite EA's move to focusing on owned IP, and EA is said to remain focused on its long-standing relationship with Disney and Marvel. The cuts continue. Additionally, EA will be restructuring its Battlefield team somewhat following the departure of Marcus Leto, which was announced yesterday. It's sunsetting Ridgeline Games, folding some of its developers into Ripple Effect. Danny Isaac and Darren White at Criterion will oversee single-player work on the series going forward. And EA will also sunset a number of mobile games, including the already announced F1 Mobile Racing and MLB Tap Sports, as well as Kim Kardashian Hollywood and The Lord of the Rings Heroes of Middle-Earth, which was released less than a year ago. IG understands that EA intends to rewarrant its business and development plans to focus on a handful of its biggest franchises, including EA Sports, Apex Legends, Star Wars Jedi, Iron Man, Black Panther, Battlefield, Need for Speed, Dragon Age, Skate, and The Sims. IGN has also learned that a team is still working in pre-production on the next Mass Effect, though BioWare's current focus remains on Dragon Age. The game industry continues to be rocked by layoffs. For the financial quarter ending in December of 2023, EA reported net bookings of $2.37 billion, up 7% over year, and net revenue of $1.945 billion, largely driven by EA Sports, FC, and Madden. The company's layoff of roughly 670 individuals is yet another instance of ongoing mass layoffs rocking the industry, impacting roughly 10,000 developers in 2023, and approaching 8,000 in just the first two months of 2024. Really hang on those last two sentences for a minute in two ways. One, I can't imagine the stress and heartache that these people are feeling that were passionate just trying to make games and lose their livelihood and daily job. Just awful. But two, people at the top need to start being held accountable for these kind of things. Why are you beefing up your studios if you're just going to lay everyone off so soon afterwards? I mean, you're just really messing with people's lives. I don't know. It's all very frustrating and sad. And for Respawn, making a Star Wars FPS, I was so excited. Respawn has not missed, and I love them. So this is very disappointing to see. Yet another EA canceled Star Wars game. Number three. Crash Bandicoot dev splits from Activision exploring possible partnerships with Xbox. Sean Carey at True Achievements writes, Acquired by Microsoft as part of the huge Activision Blizzard acquisition, Crash Bandicoot 4 developer Toys for Bob has now split from Activision and is going independent. However, despite going it alone as an indie studio, the developer could still end up working closely with Xbox Game Studios. In a post on its official website, studio heads Paul Vaughn and Avery Lodato announced that Toys for Bob is breaking away from Activision to go independent. Quote, we are thrilled to announce that Toys for Bob is spinning off as an independent game development studio. Over the years, we've inspired love, joy, and laughter for the inner child and all gamers. We pioneered new IP and hardware technologies in Skylanders. We raised the bar for best-in-class remastered in Spyro Reignited Trilogy. We've taken Crash Bandicoot to innovative, critically acclaimed new heights. With the same enthusiasm and passion, we believe that now is the time to take the studio and our future games to the next level. This opportunity allows us to return to our roots of being a small and nimble studio." End quote. This is hopefully a feel-good story because we thought a few weeks ago that Toys for Bob was being shut down as part of Microsoft's mass layoffs. I guess some of the heads were able to negotiate with Microsoft and split away to become independent, which is awesome if they continue to make great games. Personally, I haven't played any of the series that they were a part of, but I heard nothing but good things. And they're going to still be working in Microsoft in some type of partnership? Seems like a win-win for everybody. And number four, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic remake dev Saber Interactive escapes Embracer in $500 million deal. Wesley Inpool at IGN writes, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic remake developer Saber Interactive has reportedly left embattled parent company Embracer in a $500 million deal to become a privately owned company. Bloomberg reports that the troubled Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic remake 
is still in the works, although question marks remain over whether it will ever actually come out, and if it does, what sort of game it will be. In November, Embracer CEO Lars Wingafors refused to answer a question about the KOTOR remake, during a financial presentation saying, quote, I notice that anything I say to this becomes a headline, so this is my only comment, end quote. Saber Interactive is also developing Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine 2, due out in September. Borderlands developer Gearbox is also up for sale as Embracer's high-profile restructuring continues. I had to include this in here. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic is one of my favorite games of all time. It's a masterpiece. Go back and play the original because if we ever actually do get this remake, it's really going to be something special. So good for them for getting away of the mess that is Embracer Group, Saber Interactive. Go cooking on Star Wars KOTOR. Give me that game now. As always, we end our show with a fun fact about Xbox, and this one is credit to the gamer discussing how Xbox was manufactured at a loss. So, despite the overwhelming success of Halo Combat Evolved and Xbox Live, the Xbox was manufactured at a loss. Each Xbox cost $425 to manufacture, while it was only sold for $300, a price that would fall to $200 in 2002. Financially, the Xbox was a failure. It would take until the end of 2004 for the console to turn a profit, which was mainly due to the spike of Xbox Live subscriptions after Halo 2's release. Ain't that something? Imagine if they tried to turn a profit, maybe launch at 425 or 450. I don't know if we'd even have Xbox like we do have it today. They were really trying to get their foot in the door, compete with all the other behemoths that were out there already, Sony, Nintendo, even a little bit of Sega at that point. And soon after turning a profit in 2004, 2005, we got the Xbox 360, and then it was history ever since, until the downfall of the Xbox One. And now here we are with the Series X generation, and personally, I am still happy. Thank you all for listening to the Xbox in 10 podcast, your weekly source of Xbox gaming news in around 10 minutes. If you like the show, please subscribe to your favorite podcast service, share with your friends, leave a review, and follow on all social media at Xbox in 10. This past week, I've had really no time to game properly, so it is just the daily addiction continued of Marvel Snap. Maybe the greatest game of all time? Don't quote me on that. My name is Brandon Rosa. You can follow me on Xbox at Rosa93. Hope you all have a great week. Stay safe and keep on gaming.